Hey everyone, welcome to another discussion with uh, experts in the field of digital teaching, learning, learning analytics, and related fields. Uh, today we have a huge privilege to be able to chat with uh, a colleague and friend uh, from about a decade ago, Abelardo Pardo. Abelardo, welcome. And why don't you. you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do. So I'm currently the Dean Academic and soon to be Dean of Programs at the University of South Australia in Australia. Uh, my area of expertise over the last 10, 15 years has been in educational technology and a bit more precisely in the area of learning analytics, how to collect, understand and use data to increase uh, the level of understanding we have about learning experiences and how to improve them. Great. And one of the things you were early on in trying to push people in the area of blended learning, using technology in classrooms, being able to support students in ways that might not necessarily work if you just have a, a faculty member running a course. There's a range of ways that technology can assist and help to improve that relationship. Could you share a little bit about what has your research been and what has some of your practice been in using technology? Yeah, so from very early on, one of the things that I realized is that um, a learning experience is a lot about interaction, right, between students, instructors, resources, object management, knowledge creation. Um, what I learned over the years is that technology more than replacing interaction is enhancing the type of interaction that occurs. Um, I started teaching face-to-face -face mostly, but one of the things that I realized as soon as I started moving activities online in parallel with my face-to-face -face teaching, what you would call blended learning, what I realized is, is that I was offering my students many more opportunities to engage, many more channels to interact and pretty much you can you can simplify a little bit the approach and say the more interaction the more effective the learning experience and this has been something that i've been observing quite a lot and and pushed me to bring a lot of activities online discussion forums uh, peer review uh, collaborative projects uh, handling objects collaboratively it could be documents could be programming assignments and it's been very very rewarding the next stage is that once you approach the design problem under these terms that all the interaction is good, then you have a bit more of a general view of what kind of delivery is the one that is suitable for that moment. It could be a face-to-face -face only, but it could be a completely online. So you start gaining a little bit more insight of the most appropriate interactions that are working in these, in these platforms. Um, two areas of research that uh, recently have uh, uh, receive my interest, so to speak. Uh, one of them is providing feedback, providing feedback through online mechanisms and scaling that provision to larger student cohorts. Um, the area of learning analytics uh, has the possibility of offering you very comprehensive data sets and those data sets give you a little bit of an approximation of the situation of each student. And with the help of technology that you can start personalizing um, short, feedback messages or short feedback interactions, so to speak, um, that you otherwise would have face-to-face, -face, obviously, but you can, with the help of technology, scale it to thousands of users. So this is one area that has been um, very, very interesting for me. The other one is just analyzing the patterns of engagement online and beginning to unpack how the way the resources are packed, how the way the overall learning experience is designed has an effect on how students engage. And I was able to observe different types of engagement with um, videos that are followed by questions or discussion forums that are well grounded on videos or discussions that occur after a very engaging synchronous session. So again, the area of learning analytics gives you a little bit of an insight about what is exactly, ex exactly happening. One of, the, one of the quotes that I like a lot from uh, Peter Goodyear, one of the experts in learning, is that when you design a learning experience, you design for learning, you have an intention, but you never know what happens when you deploy it. And the online uh, platform is, it's a little bit of that reality. Uh, you have certain assumptions in mind, but as soon as you deploy it, you assume that students are engaging in certain ways and patterns, but then you may need to get that insight from the data or from other indicators and, and get a better sense of what is happening, how effective it is, the level of interaction, and at the end of the day, um, basically to try to see, to get a sense of the quality of the overall experience. So these are the two main areas that I've been interested in the last few years.
it's a terrific area of uh, overlap, obviously, because a lot of the people taking this course right now are going to be new into the online environment, and they're going to be asking questions about what actually works, like what does the research evidence say? And from what you're sharing, there's a good, ba a good bit of research evidence around the importance of creating for interaction, and secondly, around the importance of providing timely and appropriate feedback. And I like the angle that you have, which is it's not not about replacing the role that a teacher has it's about given the nature of a set of constraints you might have about augmenting that kind of an impact now one of the things that be uh, helpful to, to hear a bit more about is the tool set that you've developed with a project in Australia a grant uh, you called it on task learning do you want to talk a little bit about what that is and how might that be relevant uh, for, for teachers yeah, so um, to summarize a little bit the story behind uh, what prompted our project, we first started collecting very comprehensive data sets of what type of events and what type of interactions were occurring online. We first followed the path of analyzing those and creating very sophisticated dashboards. And, and it was very interesting. The insights we gained from those dashboards were very interesting. The next step was perhaps to share those dashboards with the students. But at the end of the day, what we realize is that what really makes a difference are the consequences, the actions that derive from that information. So we changed our perception of the problem almost radically and started thinking, what would be the right actions that would make sense? And how do you inform those actions with the data you have? At the same time, one of the elements that we, we thought it was most important to, to provide positive actions to your course is the provision of feedback. So we started exploring, we discovered an area that it doesn't seem to be very relevant at first, but it has quite a lot of space that uh, we discovered, which is the provision of these short messages uh, depending on the situation of each student. We realized that the more personalized the message, the more effective, the more attention would um, take from the student. So from the point of view of the data, it is fairly straightforward, depending on the quality of your data, but it's fairly straightforward to get a sense of the level of engagement, the depth of uh, interaction with resources, some resources that are ignored, or some patterns that are very easily detected, like pushing maybe tasks for the very last minute. And what we saw is that there was a possibility through these insights to provide these personalized messages, and the reaction of the students were very positive because we were able to identify certain patterns very quickly and provide them with very Simple advice coming from a human, completely written in terms of the expert that, or the instructor that is uh, driving the course. So it was very highly uh, received by the students. The project uh, created a tool, which we call OnTask, it's open source. It's been now used in quite a few institutions all around the world because it solves a very precise problem, which is the difficulty that instructors have to communicate on a personalized way once you go beyond 50, 60, 80 students, there is only so much you can do by hand. Um, it doesn't solve the problem completely in the sense that it's not a conversational agent, but it does open that reflection process and it does open another channel, like you mentioned before, it enhances the communication between instructor and student, and I think it has a very positive effect. So it was a very rewarding project and I'm very glad to see that it's being adopted all over the place. Well, so, and one of the, the interesting aspects here that and we've talked about this within the course several times is we sort of have a camel effect going on in terms of the digitization of teaching. Right now, everyone's in crisis mode. I mean, it, it's quite literally, the, it's not about what works well necessarily, uh, or, or even about what's the best research say. It's about what do you have access to? What do your students have access to? What does the institution have in terms of uh, software or th that it's already purchased to make available? And then th that navigating that crisis mode is likely going to be a period of about six to eight weeks, depending on the calendar, the academic calendar that the institution is in. Obviously, people in the Southern Hemisphere are just starting their fall semester. People in the Northern Hemisphere are partway through their, their winter or spring semester. What you're talking about with OnTask and why it's such a fascinating tool set, it fits into the second hump of the camel, which is going to be coming in uh, sometime in September, in fall. And by that time, we don't expect, at least all indicators are, that COVID will still be a factor and it's questionable that we'll be 100% returned back to regular campus hours within the next you know, three or four months. This could run for a longer period of time. Getting to that second stage is where intentional planning, effective learning design, and the use of tool sets like uh, OnTask can be particularly effective. 
So you've talked a bit about what you've done in classrooms, the value of interaction, so on. I'd like to final question to focus a little bit on this perspective of as students or as teachers, I should say, get past this next month or two. What kind of advice would you give them based on your research that they can incorporate into their own practice as they prepare for uh, perhaps an uncertain future with greater use of technology? So to me, the two or three main guidelines that helped me a lot in the past is, and, and I would probably group them all under the headline, how to try to tackle this new delivery mode without losing your mind, basically, is to um, take two approaches. One is to start slowly. Don't try to adopt too many things that are new. Start slowly. Start to be um, strategic on what you think it is, the essence of the interaction with the students. And the other thing that has helped me a lot from my point of view is to devote enough time to put yourself in the shoes of the student. Uh, try to picture yourself sitting in a room, connecting to an LMS, getting a sense of the first web pages in there, getting a sense of looking for your material, getting a sense of how do I understand what I have to do this week? Um, where do I find the resources? How do I connect with my instructor? Am I supposed to talk to my peers? As soon as you get into this habit, um, you start collecting a lot of questions and all these questions then are driving your design. All of a sudden, you're much more sensitive to make sure that the information is very clearly stated, make sure that the most relevant information is at the right place, make sure the channels of communications are adapting to the needs of your students. So I guess, yeah, yeah a broad guideline would be make an effort to put yourself in the shoes and that a student that is looking at the screen on the other side and adapt your design accordingly and do that gradually before bringing all the bells and whistles to your design. A final thought that comes to mind, the, the way I've been approaching this is we tend to think of courses like something that needs to be put out there and then students will come. Over the years, I changed my, my mind and reading a lot of experts in pedagogy, I tend to think my course is a very complex design. Or if you push me, I would even call it a very complex ecosystem where little details have big impact. Um, I can give you examples just putting myself in the shoes of that student that connects and doesn't know exactly what to do today. Well, maybe we need to include a to-do list for this week and things that you should know by the end of the week. That would help the student organize their, their time. And time management is correlates with performance. Or um, perhaps if you are supervising several courses, and this goes more at the institutional level, maybe these courses should have a similar structure because you know getting into every course with a different structure, those are things that um, burn a lot of attention and, and a lot of motivation from the students. And then the same, the same concepts apply to the body of knowledge. Um, I found very useful to put myself in the shoes of those students to explain complex concepts with a video or with a discussion online. And I always found myself going back, what would a regular student think about this video? What would, what would be the, the difficult point? What kind of interaction can I promote online? Um, just start thinking, just start thinking in those terms, just start unpacking a lot of things. Let me tell you another anecdote that I remember when I found that it was very surprising. Uh, in one of my blended learning courses, I deploy a discussion forum. Um, it was blended, they could be face-to-face -face anyway, but I realized that I was gathering a lot of traffic on that uh, discussion forum, which validated my idea of offering an alternative way of communication. But one of the things that platform had was allowing the students to post messages anonymously to the rest of the class, but not to myself. So I would always know who is posting. And I remember turning that feature on and detecting another spike in traffic. And again, this is you thinking in terms of the, maybe my audience is a bit you know, apprehensive of putting the name in there. That's okay. We still want your contribution. We still want your interaction. Is there a tool in there that will allow me to do that? And does that contribute to your learning? So those are more or less the guidelines. And, and these details, again, reinforce my view that we're not designing courses. We are designing complex ecosystems leading to learning experiences. Great, and I think that's a fantastic note uh, on which to end because I think to realize that even something that you as an academic find simple, intuitive, and you understand well, uh, there's a series of dynamics and relationships and engagements that your students experience for the first time uh, would, would likely find uh, quite uh, intimidating and even overwhelming. So I appreciate you sharing your insight and look forward to having uh, course participants engage with more of your work. My pleasure.